it's time to have the conversation. Let's talk about heat sinks. In guitar electronics, there are times where we run into circuits that require heat sinks to cool a chip from working too hard, blowing itself up, and letting out the magic smoke. We typically see these in circuits that use linear regulators, power amplifiers, and other high wattage devices. For today's example, we'll use an LM7809 style linear voltage regulator, specifically the ST Microelectronics L7809CV. The one we're specifically looking at here comes in a TO220 package, so it'll look something like this. If you're not familiar with this IC, this is a simple voltage regulator that steps down voltages to 9 volts, which is something we would use in a typical guitar pedal. We will need to find some information on the datasheet about this IC. The first one we will look for is the top operating temperature, or basically how hot can this thing run at. So if we scroll down for the uh, type C chip here, we have an operating temperature range of 0 to 125 degrees Celsius, meaning 125 degrees is the max that this thing can run at. The next thing we need to know is the theta junction to case and theta junction to ambient air temperature. And we can find that down here. Here's the JC and the theta of JA. We're using the 220 package here. So the theta of junction to case is 5 degrees C over W. And the theta junction to ambient is 50 degrees C over W. Now suppose we have a DC power supply delivering a maximum of 2 amps at 15 volts, and we have a guitar pedal that draws 20 milliamps at 9 volts. We will use this L7809CV to drop the 15 volts down to 9, which is something this IC does rather well. However, what happens to the unused voltage? Well, linear regulators burn that off as heat. So we need to calculate the power dissipation. We do this by taking the source voltage and subtract it by the regulated voltage and multiply that by the current. So we have 15 volts coming in here, minus 9 volts, what we're trying to get to, and that equals 6 volts. We multiply that 6 volts by the 20 milliamps that we need to deliver, and that equals 0.12 watts or 120 milliwatts. So let's assume that the ambient air temperature is 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit for us Yanks. The theta of junction ambience total is equal to the temperature of junction, which is the maximum operating temperature, minus the temperature of ambience, and then divide that by the power dissipation we got earlier. So in this case, 125 degrees Celsius is the maximum that this chip will take. We'll subtract it by the 27 degrees Celsius of the ambient air temperature, and that equals 98 degrees Celsius. We'll divide that by the 120 milliwatts of power dissipation we determined from earlier, and that equals 816.7 degrees C over W. If the theta junction to ambient total thermal resistance is less than junction to case thermal resistance, then you need to look for a higher wattage regulator. 816.7 is not less than 5, so this regulator is good to use. If the theta junction to ambient total thermal resistance is greater than the junction to ambient thermal resistance, then a heat sink is not required. 816.7 is greater than 50, so in this case, a heat sink isn't required. So let's say we have a DC power supply of 18 volts that delivers 2 amps. We have a digital guitar pedal that draws 200 milliamps at 9 volts. What do we have to deal with here for power dissipation? Well, let's calculate that. We take the source voltage and subtract it by the regulated voltage and multiply by the current. So 18 volts minus 9 volts equals 9 volts. And we multiply that by the 200 milliamps. And we get a value of 1.8 watts. Let's say this circuit with the L7809CV will be enclosed. So it's going to have poor air circulation in it. And we'll say that this enclosure is outside in the summer in the sun. Ambient temperature inside that enclosure can get up to 60 degrees Celsius. So 125 degrees Celsius minus 60 degrees Celsius equals 65 degrees Celsius. Divide that by 1.8 watts and we get 36.1 degrees C over W. 36.1 is not lesser than 5, so the regulator is still good to use. 
If the junction to ambient total thermal resistance is less than the junction to ambient, but more than the junction to case thermal resistance, then a heat sink is required. So, 5 is less than 36.1, which is less than 50. So yes, in this case right here, a heat sink will be required. So if we look for a heat sink online, the value that we're looking for is the theta sink to ambient thermal resistance, or it might just be called thermal resistance, depending on the site. To calculate the value of thermal resistance that we need, we take the theta junction ambience total and subtract that by the theta junction to case. So in our example here, we have 36.1 minus 5 equals 31.1 C over W. So any heat sink that naturally handles 31.1 C over W or lower will be sufficient in cooling this L7809 CV. We can find that value actually over here on DigiKey. They call it thermal resistance at natural. And as you can see right here, all these ones right here, uh, with the exception of that guy, uh, would be more than enough because the value is lower than 31.1. Another trick that guitar pedal builders will use is utilizing the pedal enclosure as the heatsink, being that it is basically a big block of metal. Here we have a 1590B style enclosure, and this enclosure has about 171.4 square centimeters of area, giving it roughly a sink to ambient thermal resistance of around 3.5 C over W, which is pretty massive. So hopefully that gives you an idea of where heat sinks are used, how big they need to be, how to figure out which one you need to select on your project, and so on. So if you enjoy these kind of videos, slap like now, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you wish to support us, head over to our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and buy a couple PCB projects or some components. And I think I've rambled on enough anyway, so uh, cheers, and we'll see you in the next video.